Hi everybody. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to work the trig problems in Alex, so I just want to run through a few things that might be really helpful for you. Okay, so let's see. Just first of all, here are some general things to keep in mind when you're working these problems. First of all, the triangle has to be a right triangle. Now, in our homework, they all are, so don't worry about it for the homework. But if you're trying to work with this outside of class in another context and the triangle is not a right triangle, then you have to use more advanced formulas that we're not working with. One is called the law of sines, the other is called the law of cosines. There are other formulas as well that we could use, but for our purposes on the homework, everything is right triangles. The next thing, and this is what I'm picking up from some things that people have said in class, the sides are relative to the angle that you're working with. Okay, so for example, you can say that I'm a sister, that's good, but who am I a sister to? I'm a sister to my brother Casey, my brother Leon, and my sister Penny. All right, I don't doesn't make sense to say I'm a sister unless you know who I'm a sister to. And in this case, when we talk about the opposite and the uh, adjacent sides of a triangle, you need to know the angle before you know what those are. Some people sound like they think that like the side on the right side of the triangle is always the opposite or something like that. And that's not true. It depends on the triangle and it depends on the angle. I'll point this out when we do an, ex when we do an example problem so that you can see what I mean by that. Because those sides are relative to the angle, it's really helpful to label those sides before you start to work on the problem. And that's what I'm gonna do on my, my examples as well so that we can keep track of what we've got. And then finally, your calculator has to be set in degrees. Just like we had the imperial system and the metric system in week one, okay, there are different ways to measure angles as well. We're not gonna use radians, we're not gonna use gradients, we're working in degrees. If you have your calculator set to work in radians, you can work the problem absolutely correctly, but your answer won't be in won't be correct because the calculator will be using a different measuring system than what we've got. So make sure that's done. Every calculator is a little bit different. I'm gonna use an online calculator so that you can see how to set it on that. If you don't have a calculator or you're not sure how to set your calculator to be in, rate in, in degrees, you can use this calculator as well. I'm gonna to go to calculator.net, okay? Finally, we've talked about this in class. Some people have brought it up, and this is a very good mnemonic. I can't even say the word. Mnemonic. To remember when you're working with right triangles. The SOH stands for that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And finally, the tangent of an angle is the opposite side over the adjacent and I'll be using that in our problems as well. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. All right, let's take a look at the three kinds of problems they're basically asking for. The first kind of problem is very simple. It's finding the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of an angle. The second uh, kind of problem is a little bit more complicated. It's finding the side of a triangle. Notice on these questions, they tell you they have the trig function cosine, sine, or uh, a cosine, sine, or tangent. On the second kind, they don't have that. So keep that in mind. Know which kind of problem you're working with. And then the third kind is where they ask you to find the angle. So on the first two, the angle is given. Sorry about my bad handwriting. And sorry about any noises you might hear in the background. That's my kitty cat Molly back there playing around with her mice. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. Here is the first kind. 
use uh, find the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. These rely on SOHCAHTOA, and they have you just set up the ratio. Okay, so the way you're going to identify these is that in the question, it's going to tell you to find, and then the trig function, sine, cosine, and or tangent is going to be in there as well. So these are the things that are telling you that it's the first type of problem, the sine, the tangent, and the cosine right here. So on these kinds of problems, I'm going to rely on SOHCAHTOA. Okay, I'm also going to label. Remember I said I need to label what is what. The angle I'm working with is up here. So here's how I label. The first thing I do is I find the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. That was one problem I had when I was a student. I always thought, well, couldn't that be the adjacent? But the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. And the other side of that angle is always the adjacent. So find the angle, identify the hypotenuse, and then the adjacent is the other one that's on that angle. Then the third side that you haven't labeled yet, there's your opposite. Now, this could be different. Let me move this out of the way. Remember I said that whatever is the adjacent or the opposite depends on the angle. If we had had this angle down here, then the hypotenuse would still be the hypotenuse and this would be the adjacent. Okay, because it's the one that touches the angle. And then this one over here on the right would be the opposite. So it sounds like some people always think the same side is going to be the adjacent. Some people think like, this is always going to be the adjacent over here. That's not true. You need to know which angle it is first before you label. I'm going to erase these now. Otherwise, I'm going to confuse myself. All right, so let's take a look. We need to find sine of x. We've identified the angle. We've identified our three sides. And SOHCAHTOA tells us that the sine of the angle x is the opposite. So the opposite in this case is a C over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse in this case is a B. So there's my sine of x. Now I want cosine of x. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in my picture that I've labeled, the adjacent is A. There's my adjacent. And my hypotenuse is B. And then finally, we need the tangent. So tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is C. And adjacent is A. So those are my three answers to that. And I'm just going to pop those into Alex really quickly because I like to have positive feedback. So sine of x was c over b. Tangent of x was c over a. And cosine of x was A over B. Let's check this out. Oh, my check is way down here. Check. Go me. Okay, let's go on to the next kind of problem now. Oh, before we go to the next kind of problem, it doesn't matter if these are variables or if these are numbers. For example, if they had told you that this was five, okay, then for cosine of x, you would just say five over b. So whatever it is that they tell you, you just put it there. It doesn't matter if it's a number or a variable. You just put what's there. 
All right, next kind of problem now. Here's our second type of problem where we need to find a particular side of a triangle. In this case, we still need to know what our adjacent and our opposite and our hypotenuse are. We still use uh, SOHCAHTOA, but now we're going to have an extra step, and that is we're going to have a little bit of algebra. So let's take a look at this problem. It says solve for x. Now x is a side of, a pro side of the angle, not an angle. And this doesn't say find the tangent of x or find the cosine of x. It just says just find x. All right. So I'm going to set this up the same way that I did before. I'm going to label my angle. I'm going to find my hypotenuse. And then the other side of that angle is my adjacent. And the third side is my opposite. Now I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to write out my SOHCAHTOA. Okay, and let's see. I have to look at what I have in this question. I have the opposite, and I have the hypotenuse. So in SOHCAHTOA, I need to find which of these things has the opposite and the hypotenuse, because those are the two sides of the angle that I've already found, that I already know. So what I'm looking for is there's a number there, and there's not a number, but a variable there. So I have the opposite, and I need the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to use this equation. Sine of the angle, the angle always goes with the trig function, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And opposite was 13, and hypotenuse was x. OK? So there's my equation so far. Now. This looks a little crazy, but when you have a trig function with an angle in it, you can find that. It has a value that you can find with a calculator. So let's hop onto the calculator and see what we can do. Here's calculator.net. I'm going to slide this page down a little bit so that you can see it better. And I'm going to look at our equation as well. Sine of 44 degrees, that's what I need to find. I'm going to open up this page bigger again. Here's my sign. And now I'm going to enter 44 degrees. Notice I'm in degrees. I should have checked that first. But I'm set in degrees, so I'm in good shape there. Let me move this down a little bit because I don't think you can see it very well. So I'm set in degrees, I punch the sine, and then I put in 44 degrees, and that's the answer to that. Will that let me copy and paste? Let's see. Look at that. Go me. Oh, it doesn't work so well. I take it back. So 0.6947, let's go that far. Now all I have to do is use some algebra to solve this equation. So it's a proportional equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And that's going to give me 0.6947x equals 13. And then I'll divide by 0.6947. And that's going to give me x equals 13 over 0.6947. Even though the question says round to the nearest tenth, you really need to use more decimals until the very end. I think as long as we're going to one decimal place in our answer, four decimals should be good enough to get an accurate answer. Don't round your intermediate answers off. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this. 
I'm going to clear, and I had to find, of course I can't remember, 13 over 0 0.6947. 13 divided by 0.6947. And my answer is 18.7. Let's pop that into Alex and take a look. You know, I have a, that's a short memory. I have already forgotten that number. 18.7, 18.7, 18.7, 18.7. If I had pencil and paper, this would be much easier. 18.7. And I'm going to check my answer. If I can get Alex to show the check button. Voila. OK. So far, so good, I hope. Let's look at our third type of question. This one is a little bit more complicated. The third type is when you have to find an angle, not a side. In this case, you're going to use what's called an inverse trig function. You're going to go backwards. Now, depending on what kind of a calculator you have, it may appear two different ways. You may have a sine, cosine, tangent with an A in front of it. Sometimes these are called arc sine, arc cosine, or arc tangent. Those are old language, but they're still used. Arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. So your calculator might use that, or your calculator might have a sine with a minus one exponent. And in this case, that minus one is not an exponent, okay? It means something completely different. You have to get it from context, okay? Your calculator might require you to use the second key all right, depending on your calculator. If you're not sure, you can just use calculator.net because it's got the buttons right there for you. You don't have to worry about that second key at all. Okay, let's take a look at an example. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to set up a trig function. But let's look at the example. So here's an example from Halix. It says we have a plane that's 127 miles north and 189 miles east of an airport, and they want us to find x. That's the angle that the pilot should fly in order to fly directly to the airport. And we're going to round to the nearest tenth of a degree, but of course we're not going to do that until the end. So let's take a look. We have a right triangle right here. Here's a right triangle. We have an angle, but this time the variable is the angle. Before, in the previous problem, the variable was one of the sides. When the variable is the angle, that's when you know that you're going to use an inverse trig function. So there's my variable. It's where there's my angle, it's the variable. And the hypotenuse, here's my hypotenuse. Always find your hypotenuse first. The other one that's connected to the angle is your adjacent. And then the leftover one is your opposite. So let's see what we can set up. <clears throat> In this case, I know two sides. So one side is the opposite. The other side is the adjacent. Let's look at Sokotoa. I need something that has opposite and adjacent. Opposite and hypotenuse, no. Op adjacent and hypotenuse, no. Opposite and adjacent. I'm going to use tangent for this problem. So I'm going to set this up. Tangent. The angle always goes with the trig function, so the x is now inside the tangent. That's opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 127, and adjacent is 189. And unfortunately, I can't solve this with algebra the way it stands, because the variable is inside this tangent. So this is where we use the inverse trig functions. And here's how we do it. 
we take the inverse tangent of the left side and whatever you do to the left side you have to do to the right side so that's the inverse tangent of the right side and on the left side of the equation those two cancel out and that just leaves x equals inverse tangent of 127 over 189. And I'm going to put that into calculator.net and see what we get. So calculator.net, all clear. I'm in degrees, make sure you're in degrees. And this time we need the inverse tangent. And notice right there, they call it arc tangent right there. And we want 127 over 189. So 127 divided by 189 equals 33.8994. So let's put that into Alex and double check it. And we want one tenth of a, degree, of a degree, so 33.9 is what we should enter. 33.9 degrees. Let's get Alex to check for us. Oh, I just love that validation. All righty. So I hope that this helped get a start on this. If you have questions, please feel free, take a screenshot and post it in the questions area that I set up for every week. And we can take a look at individual questions, okay? I hope this is helpful. I'll have it up online for you in just a second. Bye-bye now.